to rakese mayalato it will rakobo jesus loves me yes i know the of the bible tells me so little ones to him belongs there we body is wrong yes jesus loves me yes jesus loves me yes jesus loves me for the bible tells me so Jesus loves me, yes I know, oh, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong, yes Jesus loves me, yes Jesus loves me, yes Jesus loves me, he proved it on the cross, Jesus loves you, yes I know, oh, for the Bible tells me so, only to one to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. He proved it on the cross. I know Jesus loves you. Yes, I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. He proved it on the cross. Okay. No one can love you like Jesus. No husband can love you like Jesus. No wife can love you like Jesus. No parent can love you like Jesus. No friends in this world. No one can love you the way Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The way he will love you. I don't know whatever, I don't know whatever you are passing through in your home, in your family. I don't know whatever you are passing through. I don't know whatever you are passing through in your marriage. I don't know whatever you are passing through in your relationship. Listen to power, listen by the Spirit of the Lord. You will pass through. You are destined to pass through. Everyone is destined to pass through one thing or the other. Let it see, don't shine away. You will pass through. If you study your Bible very well in Isaiah 43, verse 2, it says, When thou passest through fire, through water first, it says, I will be with you. When you pass through waters, I will be with you. Jesus himself was saying, the Bible said there was tongues, and he said, Still, peace be still. He, he rebuke. All you need to do is to rebuke. You don't shine away, don't run away, don't pretend as if there is no problem. You will pass through through your destiny. Everyone in this on the surface of the head, we are all passing through one thing or the other. But those in Christ, those in Christ Jesus, the easy is our shoulder. When thou passest through the waters, he said, I will be with you. I am to rasamba laka to lakata. That water of difficulties, that water problematic life and moral power, whatever you are passing through, my God will be with you. I say, my God will be with you. He will not leave you. He will not leave you. He will stand by you. He will fight the battle for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, he say, and through the rivers, and through the rivers, they shall not overthrow thee. And through the rivers, in they shall not overthrow thee. That problem will not overcome you. You will overcome. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say you will overcome. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you see, listen to me, child of God. It says, hey, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Ha! In the name Oh Lord, oh man. listen to me. There are different categories of fire. We have the fire from life, fire from darkness. Listen, he said, when, 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 when Jesus is saying, he say, pa, ra, pa, 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 ra, ba, ba. the word of God, ra, pa. Jesus is the word. He is the word. So he is telling you, hey, master, he said, when thou 
walkest through, when thou walkest through the fire, they shall not burn thee. They shall not burn thee. Ay, 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 ay. Ah, I don't know. Yeah, but life is all, business is all, this is all, family is all, relationship is all, your home is all, you are not enjoying it. Ah, they shall not burn you. You are coming out triumphantly. In the name of Jesus, I release the fire of God to quench the fiery dart of the enemies in your life, in your home, in the life of your children, your husband, your wife. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me hear you shall fire like thunder. Let it say to me, child of God, I love you, Lord. Hey, by the Spirit of the Lord, I give you the background knowledge of the world. I love you. We move on to the second aspect, which is understanding. I I love you. Uh, no, no, understanding I love you, we consider various aspects of I love you. <laughs> Number two, we consider by the Spirit of God, psychological aspect of I love you. Now, Number three, today, we are going to be considering cultural aspect on I love you. The cultural aspect. Hey, mama, mama, mama. In this kingdom, we have culture here. Heavenly culture. Hey, mama, baba. If you want to be a member of this family, you must get ready. Get ready. You don't do what you want to do. You have to eat what we are eating here. You have to do what we are doing here. In this kingdom, we normally pray. In this kingdom, we normally fast. In this kingdom, the culture, the values we have here is holy life. You have to be ready to forsake evil ways, wickedness. I mean, sinful life. You have to put on a new life because now we've got a new family. Oh my God. Oh my God. Those of you that are married, you know you were coming from one family and now you are in a new family. How are you enjoying the family? I hope you are enjoying it well. Let me give you the gist or you are not married. Listen, once you leave your father and mother, you are going to enter a new family. Hey, I want to give you the gist about this kind of family. Listen to me. I am a robot. I tell the truth, entering a relationship, entering a home, entering a marriage is entering into culture. Is entering into culture, not just marrying the person, not just marrying the personality, whether a girl or a, whether a man or a woman, you know, a lady or a guy. You are entering, child of God, into you are marrying what is called you are marrying what is called a whole man or a whole woman. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! Not just the personality that you are married. You are more of a certain cultural. You buy everything about the. Now, the culture has been, let me give you this gist. What is culture? What are you marrying into? This is what you are marrying into. You have to have it in your cerebrum. Put it in left hand so that you will not use those eat, swallow, or eat whatever we eat. Very important. Culture. You are marrying the man's culture, the woman's culture. You have this exactly. You are married. You are married. You are married. Never forget. It's from one culture. You are from another culture. So culture coming together. Becoming what is called what? a cross-cultural marriage or a cross-cultural relationship. This is what everybody is entering. It's a task that must be fulfilled. Culture is a social behavior. So you are marrying your social behavior. Culture is a norm. You are marrying norms in between. Culture is belief. You are marrying their belief. Culture is customs. You are marrying their customs. Custom is what? Custom tradition, so to speak. You are marrying their tradition. Custom is what? Practice is of a particular group of people you are marrying is from a particular group of people you are from a particular group of people two different people coming together different background different upbringing and like and dislike coming together to form a whole let us see by the spirit hand of the law you are marrying the way of life of the man you are marrying the way of life of the woman let's say you are marrying the language of the person you are marrying their mode of dressing their mode of eating the Heart. That's why you are marrying. You are marrying a religious person. You are marrying religion. It's religion. If it's worshiping stone, you must worship. You follow him to worship to accept God save you. Oh, you are a man. Then you give a command. No, this is what you're gonna do. 
<laughs> oh my God, the ladies, hear yeah, the word of the Lord. Be careful because once you enter, oh my God, he will use his mental power. That is what is happening. You know, a man believes in a woman, likes a woman that obeys that respect. And look at what the Bible says. Say, submit to your husband. Submit. Our which every Christian man will be marrying and be bringing them to this kingdom. Are you, am I talking to somebody? Listen to me. Thank God the Lord saved me. I was once a Muslim. I was reading Quran, going to Arabic school. Thank God along the line, Jesus saved me. Assuming that I am still in there. When my mother went to Mecca, they came, she came back, the son of Idia. I decided that I will be the first allergy in my father's house. Listen to me along the line, Jesus saved me. Assuming I am an allergy. I am a Muslim. If I'm married, the woman don't have what I'm Woman must must worship what I'm worshiping. Hey, this is what they call culture. Except God save you. Except God. there are men like that. They will not allow you to disturb your religion. All right. In some home, we have Christian. We have the husband is a Christian. You my you understand what I'm talking about? Eh? They have the, the, the different religion. The man is a Muslim. The woman is a Christian. So they are couple, but in some religion, some culture, they will not tolerate it. You must worship what the man is worshiping. You are marrying a social institution. You are entering into a relationship with a social institution. Ah, there is somebody, a case study in the Bible, I want to hint you with it. Ah, it's a life story of what happened. There was someone that was called Ruth. Ruth, Ruth said to a mother-in-law, Naomi, in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 to 17 he said don't urge me to leave you don't urge me to leave you starting to the mother he know Naomi or to turn back mama 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 from you my poor Rabba. he said where you go how we go where you stay how we stay he said your people your people will be my people and your god your god will be my god if you read verse 17 it says where you die i will die and there i will be buried it says may the lord deal with me but it, uh, be it rather may the lord deal with me be it ever so severely if every if even death separate you and me Oh my God, if evil death separate you and me, I see this as passion in love. Oh my God, don't forget, let me just give you a little gist of what happened. There was a man, his name was called Elimele. He left his own country because there was a great family. He went to his country called Moa. When they got there, he has two sons and a wife. Uh, the Bible declares, if you start reading from verse 1, the man died, the two children died. Now, Laomi was left, and they, have, they don't have kids. When the man died, they married. The woman decided to take wives for uh, the two sons, that is uh, Malon and Chilio. And they both married Opa and Ruth. <laughs> they both married Opa and Ruth. Don't forget, in the strange man land, and Hebrew, marrying the Moabites. <laughs> More about this. You understand what I'm talking about? All right. So the journey continued. They didn't have children. Two of them died. So Naomi was left with the two um, wives and I said, so she decided that, oh, because she had, that that is now what? That is food where I came from. She decided to return back home. So two of them followed her along the line. What happened? Everybody said, what happened? Opa went back. The Bible says that Opa went back. But Ruth decided that, no, I am not going to leave, go back because I understood what I entered into, that I married a culture. That I marry everything about you. Everything about you. <laughs> Not going back. I'm married already. Not going back. So she pressed on. The Bible said that she 
clave en ton Naomi. Si clave en ton Naomi. Si clave en ton Naomi. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. In other words, as a woman, as you are leaving your father and your mother, you are marrying the God of the man you want to marry. You are marrying the people of the man that you want to marry. Everything is relative. Everybody you are marrying. You know, in some place they will say our wives. <laughs> you understand? That is your culture. That is our way. And now modernization is trying to say, no, it's not our wife. It's my wife. <laughs> All right. So a lot of things happen. So you have to work. You have to know what is going on. And the story of Bible very well. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, he says something. Do not confirm. Do not conform, rather, do not conform to, to the patterns of this world, but be but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conform. Be not conform. Be not conform. Be not. Hey, do not, rather, do not, do not conform. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. In terms of relationship, in terms of culture, listen. You have to put into organization the will of God. What is good in the sense of God? What do you want to do? Is God aware? I am Is God pleasing? Is does it please God? Oh, a, is, is it a perfect will of God or a permissive will? Listen, when you want to enter marriage or relationship, the will that you must first of all consider is God's will, not even your will. Not you, know, your, you integrate your will inside God's will. If those of you who are not married. <laughs> You integrate your will. What is his will? What is he saying? Is she the one? Is he the one? Make inquiry like David. Let number two, parental will. That is oh, the first father, the first parents you are. You must seek his will, his permission, his, his support. Then and you now move to the, um, the, the, the parental consent. The parental will and then support, blah, 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 blah. You know, sometimes there is a contradiction between what? That is uh, a war. I don't know, war between those two wills. God may say yes, and family member may say no, you can't marry her, you can't marry him. Oh, Lord, blah, 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 blah. Listen to me. God is saying, do not conform to the pattern of this world. This world, they have their own pattern. They have their own yastic of I love you. They have their own yastic of marriage and so on. There are things that you must pass through in some culture before you marry their wife, before you marry their husband. You have to, if you don't pass through it, they will not give her or him, you know, in marriage. There are things. All those talk, but Christianity, there are some of them that are good, there are some of them that are evil. So, Christianity is eradicating all those things. The man is standing his ground. If he cannot stand his ground, the woman will fail the music. Now, very important, that is why the man must be ready to only defend his wife. Speaking for the wife, in some culture, the wife doesn't have anything. You can't see anything. It is the husband. If the husband support them, if the husband did not support them, they go ahead. All right. So it is the husband that will be a security, a, a protector of the wife. Speaking on her behalf, that is why, listen, picking no be picking in some culture. Hey, child is not a child. I mean, <clears throat> okay, children are children. No, child is a child. No, in some culture it is no. If you don't give back to a major, you are not giving back. If you like, give back to 1,000 female. They will tell you to your face, sorry, in this place, a woman don't have a say here. And when they are doing family meeting, no woman in their midst is a man. That is why you have to pray. If you don't have a male child here, or you are not married, be praying God should give you a, a male child. Study the Bible very well. This men, 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 men that are coming on board, coming on board, coming on board, coming on board. Let's say to me, that is the plan of God for your life. Those of you looking for male children, hey, receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are people that are not looking for male children, they are looking for female children. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
children are actually from the Lord. But he said, ask and you will be given. All right, he said, there you will be. You will be able to test and approve. Now, because of our time, let's quickly dive into some areas. If you study this verse very well, it's talking about three good things. Number one, the verse is encouraging behavior not to confirm themselves to what is called worldly cultural perspectives. Worldly cultural perspectives of I love you. Under that, we're going to be looking at, listen to me, there are a lot of culture all over the world, all over the globe. There are a lot of culture. Let me just give you some few of them. In Latin America, listen, Mamora Papa, many Latin American culture, their own yastic of love is passion. Once you have passion, that is I love you. Hey, they believe you really love. They are intensity. Once you intensify what you are doing in to build the that is their own yastic of law. <laughs> emotional expressiveness. Emotional expressiveness. Listen, what else you express? Ah, yeah, papa, but how much you really, that marriage, that home really matter to you? Or that guy, or that lady really matter to you? That is your own interpretation of what? Of I love you. Let's move on. I love you in Africa culture. They have their own ways. Hey. Yeah, it's, the other one is what? Communal and collective. Collective and communal. Listen to me. In, Yatura, Baba, in Africa, you marry every family. All the family. Marrying a man in Africa, you are marrying the uncles, the uh, aunts, the sisters, you are marrying the cousins, the nephew, you are marrying, uh, what do you call it, the grandparent, mother, father, you are marrying everyone, <laughs> everyone you are marrying in Africa. So, you have to oh, be ready. Now, number three, in French tradition of romance, the whole interpretation of I love you, if you really want them to... Uh, measure your yastic of law is what when you always write a love letter writing a love letter or giving flowers you must bring flowers or if you don't bring flowers to them you don't love them <clears throat> all right or enjoying romantic dinners you must take them for dinner, romantic dinners. Look for a play, a very cool play, cool music, blah blah blah. You know the way <laughs> eat in the evening. And also, that is the whole yastic of love. You know, mm, I love you in different culture, means different things. That's what we're talking about. So that if you are leaving your culture to marry another culture, you have to start leaving culture before you put in your head. Oh, all right. I love you in Chinese philosophy. In Chinese philosophy, is what the own yastic of our love to measure our love is respect. We also respect each other. Oh, that is love. Loyalty. Once you are loyal to the relationship, that is your own law. Oh, you work in harmony in that relationship. That is your own yasik of law. I love you in Indian culture. Now, in Indian culture, it is with the concept of what is called prema. Prema. That is their own is what romantic love. Oh my God. Once you are romantic in that relationship, oh my God. They uh, they just believe that you love them. That you love them. You love them. All right. You know the family of love and love of divine. In other words, you know they worship different things in India. So if you are when you love what they worship. You are interested in what they worship in their God. That you actually love them. And that is their own Yasi child of God. In Japanese culture, they have two ways to measure I love you. The first one is Koi. The second one is I. A I I. You know. And the Koi it refers to uh, the passionate love and the romantic love. Once you are passionate, I mean, concerning that relationship, you have passion. You are working towards it, making it to work. And you are romantic as well. That is how you see. And the second aspect is what? That is I. It's more deep, unconditional love. So when you love unconditionally to them, it's what? That is the only, the only aspect of saying, yeah, this guy really love our daughter. This man, you know, this woman really love our son. Now we have the last one, which is uh, many Western culture. In this Western world, there are a lot of ways. Yes, they believe in romantic. 
the see it as the ultimate of expression of love. If you are not romantic, you kiss, you you know, you know what I mean. I'm talking about. You have to be romantic. If you are not, you hold, they hold themselves, you know, in the public, you know, they don't even want to know whether somebody is looking at them or not, you know. I tell you the truth, always talking with themselves, always, always romantic ways, always calling, you know, you have to be romantic. 24 hours, you have to give them time in the Western world. Now, the other B aspect, number two aspect of that verse, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it said believers should seek God's will. You have to seek God's will and be transformed by his teaching. Listen to me, you must see God's will. Because I need that relationship is God in support. He is God in support. Hey, he's God in support. When I saw my wife, I have never met her before. <laughs> met her in the church. Oh my God. I've been praying fasting, IVG, you know. Oh, blah, blah, blah. For years. Oh Lord, give me the word of my bowl. So uh, when I saw God, that is your wife. Oh my God, that is your wife. I looked at that. This one, okay, no problem. Because that is what I've been longing for. I don't want to choose by myself. I need God's will. Perfect will, not permissive will. Hey, I know I'm horrible. After I proposed, after church wedding, I took her straight to the pastor of the church. And guess what? She did not God said yes. So the day she said yes, that was when I took her there. Proposed, she went home. When she said yes, came back with the church. You know, blah blah blah. Took her since he just said yes. So we start the day we are starting the relationship. The day we are starting the journey. I took her that day. It was after the church service. Took her to the pastor of the church, and the pastor of the church was aware. Don't do secret relationship. It will marry you. It will not make you. Don't follow a boy that is not ready, a guy that is not ready, or someone that is not ready for marriage. He or she will delay you. He or she, I said, is the will of God. You know. Love, if you love him, if you love her, you wait. But can you wait? All right, if God says you should wait, all right, God's will. Don't sin for permissive will, sin for the original will, the real will, and be transformed by his teaching. What is God saying? You have your own will, don't forget. You have the will of your partner, your partner may really want you. There are women that can do anything to get a man. There are men that can do anything to get a woman. Is God in support? Is it the will of God? Is it? Oh my God. Oh, is the partner we? Oh, my father. Oh, is your father will or your parents or your mother will? They have some parents and they don't want to care what God is saying. Oh, you know, our daughter, our son must marry. You know, that is arrangement of, you know, relationship and what have you. Listen to me, tell your God. It's not the will of your uncle. What is uncle saying? No. It's what is God saying. You look for the will of God first before you look for the other wills. Oh, these are the other wills. All the wills of your peers. Oh, oh boy, that get good. Oh, she get character. She is a wife material. Peers talking her, friends talking her. But what is God saying? Even if they say that to you, recommend someone, go back to God. God what are you saying? Hear him. Once you hear him, that's all. Even if the parental consent is not there, but God is saying that he knows how to work it out. As a man, what are you supposed to do? They didn't say the person want to marry. Go and work on your father, work on your mother. Prayerfully, pray to God on Saturday and you will talk them into it. Oh, a lady, work on your father, work on your mother, work on that uncle that is saying no to the wedding and to the marriage relationship. Go and prayerfully pray them into war. If you have you are certain that God is saying yes, or you can use your pastor. You know, in the wife are married into the truth is that the, the parents just want all their mm, the children to marry from their side. <laughs> you know what I mean. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. From their side. All right. And here I am. I'm not from this side. And God is saying, this is your wife. Honestly, I waited. And they, their family is so that no, the first must go, the second must go, before they told me go, she was your son child. And you understand what I'm talking about? So I waited. The summary is that the first went married. Okay. We started the relationship before the first, before the second, but <coughs> no problem. So I waited. 
Because I, I'm just confused that this is the will of God. So oh, I have to wait. The first, along the line, the first God, the person you want, they don't mind. The second, uh, uh, and we are the third. To the glory of God, finally, finally, we got married. Finally, finally, they gave their consent. How? They discovered that the pastor of the church, mm -hmm, and with the pastor of the church, and the pastor of the church approves it. Pastor of the church talk to the parents. Blah, blah, blah. You can use your pastor. You can use whoever that knows. If you are certain, this is the will of God. There are many people you can use. They will uncle forever to talk to whoever is saying no to the relationship. If God is saying, see, the, the other things, the other, when God says yes, no man can say no. If it is the will of God, say God's will is the ultimate. The last aspect of that verse is talking about what true I love you. The agent, you know, I love you, should align with God's standard. What is God's standard? You must align with God's standard, not the societal norms. The society has their own norms, has their own ways. But all is, your mama do it according to God's standard. According to God's standard. Once you are born again, in some part of Africa, once you will do the traditional wedding, after the traditional wedding, you can carry your wife, pin to your home, and you'll be sleeping, and you'll be leaving as husband and wife. That's all. But is it God's standard? Listen to me. You need God's blessing. Don't do that if you are from that culture. After the traditional wedding, you know you can't hold your body. Take her to the pastor. Immediately just call two, three, or ten, or four. And let them be witness. Neither you and her. Let's go to the church. Let them pray. It's not as you cut a crowd or whatever. It's not as you delay. No, 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 no. In this Western culture, they don't waste time. <laughs> oh my God. What is God's standard? The standard of God is marriage is honorable. Marriage is honorable. Bed undefined. Bed undefined. Don't sleep with her. Don't sleep with him. Until he has done the needful. Until he has settled all. He needs to settle. Court wedding. Uh, cultural stuff. The parents are concerned and they agree and they have done the needful. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Then, then, and then, and then, and then. God's blessing. Oh, my God. It's so sweet. Come to that perspective of a lovely child of God. Let me fast to the various ways. And we, different culture around the whole world, understood, express, and value the concept of I love you. It comprises of what it encompasses, rather, beliefs, different beliefs, different numbers. I've told you, different traditions, different beliefs. Behaviors have different religion historical context. Everyone has got this is how we have been doing it from this home, this family. This is our side. This is how we have been doing it. And someday we ask to go and bring wine. And you know you are born again. What is God's standard? God says you should not give the Bible says, Woe is unto everyone that giveth his neighbor wine. So you are giving them wine. What is unto you a cost unto you? They will also bring wine, bring this, bring that. That is against God's standard. Oh my God. As a child of God, you're not supposed to do that. That must be always be a way. Praise God. All right. Very, very important. Cultural perspective can influence relationship and emotion. Listen, there are people that have left their countries to go to another country to go and marry. Just like uh, Elimelech and his wife, Noah, uh, Noah uh, well, Naomi, went to Moab and, you know, their children, not them, their children got married there. Yeah. <laughs> listen to this, listen to this. These are Petra, the son of a Petra, Isaac. Where did they marry from? Marriage. He married from Abraham's relatives, his own father relatives. Uh -huh. Mesopotamia. That's where he married from. Hamuru Kapakaba. When Isaac too gave birth. Jacob, where did he marry from? Jacob married from his mother's side. When Jacob too gave birth. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about those who are lying to God's will, not those who delay, not those who delay. Like Esau went and you know, to the other side, and that was the end of him. Do the right thing, then God will back up you, your lineage. <laughs> you know, how about Jacob when he gave back Joseph? Joseph, uh, in his own case, he was in a strange man's land. You know, it was Pharaoh that became the father. It was Pharaoh that became the mother. It was Pharaoh that paid his back. <laughs> <laughs> what the bright, bright one is that the diary of the wife? So the wife was forced on him. <laughs> you understand? So all the cultural 
yeah, Egyptian cultural store. The Pharaoh stood and supplied everything because Joseph had nothing. So, and what happened? The marriage work. There was no <laughs> problem in the marriage. Have a good, blissful home. It's not until when you marry from your side that's where you can have a beautiful home. I tell you, some is working for them, so it's not working. The bottom line here, the bottom line here is the will of God. It's God's will, it's God in support. You see, you are in that country, your wife may be in another country. You are in that country, your wife may be in that country. You are in, from that cultural background, your wife may not be from there. The will of God may not be from that cultural background. And the will of God may be from that cultural background. When you understand cultural perspective of I love you, it, it will foster what is called cross-cultural communication. I told you about Isaac, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, about, uh, about Joseph, rather. Joseph did what is called cross-cultural marriage. Cross-cultural marriage. So, that is, so you have to learn the language. That's what we call cross-cultural communication. If they are speaking Swahili, you have to learn it. If whatever language they are speaking, and you don't understand that language, you are married to them, you have to learn. You have to learn their food. You have to learn the way they dress. You have to learn the way they talk. You have to learn the way they greet. You have to learn the way they behave. You have to learn what they want. Their do's and don'ts. Their likeness and dislikeness. You just have to learn it. You agree to say I love you. You agree to you accept that they love you. You say I do. So be ready. It's a whole man that you are marrying, not a personality, not an individual. If the man dies today, listen, will you bury the man alone? No. You have to consult, con, con, consult. You have to contact all his relatives, those that need to be contacted, so that they will not say that you kill him, you kill him, you bury him, you <coughs> use him for ritual. And you disappear, they will look for you, and it's not proper. You have to look for these people, so you must. Yeah, even if you marry from any culture, and the man must take you to where he came from, knows where you have to know where he came from. You have to know his brothers, his sisters, you have to know the village he came from, you have to know everything about him. You just have to know for the sake of the children, even for your own sake, too, so that you know who to call. You have to have contacts. You are married, everybody. You have to be ready to learn and be submissive. Hey, Kabagara Baba. Lusutu Paragaba. Listen to me, <laughs> child of God. You have to understand this. Empathy is important. And you have to gain what you understand, the cultural perspective. You to, you want, you'll be able to have empathy. See from their perspective, the way they reason, the way they think, and so on and so forth. And you will gain insight into how love is perceived and practiced in various parts of the world. In various parts of the world, love is practiced in different ways. The way you understand love is not the way they understand love in another place. So you have to understand what is, what do they, I do what when they say I love you. What are they saying? You really have to investigate relationship across global content. Nigeria marrying a Jamaica woman. You have to understand what everything you have to know. Some culture prioritize romantic love. In some culture, if you are not romantic, no, 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 you hate them. You don't love them. I tell you the truth. And um, it's an idea of the basis for marriage. If you if, I, if you are romantic, they will marry you. They will have relationship with you. Others on um, the practical um, consideration, uh, like family approval. Others before all you can marry their own. Their, uh, there must be an approval. Then uh, some you must have money. You must get money. If you don't get money, you know. If you don't have money, you are not financially stable. If you are not financially stable in some culture, they will not give your daughter or their son to you. So you are you need financial capacity, hey katata, so that you will have a say. <laughs> oh my God! Or social status. So if you are not, eh, we have high class, low class, middle class. If you are not in the, eh, you understand? They will not allow you except God intervene. So I'm saying it as private matter. They say, I love you. The cultural aspect of I love you. Yeah, they see it as private matter. Some see it as personal matter. Some see it as communal concern. papa. Are you still there? You are blessed of the Lord. You are blessed of the Lord. I say you are blessed of the Lord. You are not born against this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, 
I am a sinner. Forgive me all my sins. Wash my sins away with your blood. Purify me now. Take away aches from my life. Baptize me with the spirit of love. Help me to know what I'm doing. Help me if I've made mistakes. Lord, intervene. Lord, intervene. If I've entered wrong home, Lord, intervene. Set me, deliver me now. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Father, give me a loving home. Give me a peaceful home. Open your matter for your prayer. Ata, lata. Give me a peaceful home, Lord. Give me a loving home, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I beg you, please subscribe. Please touch the like buttons. And I beg you in the name of the Lord, please, please share to all your contacts. And as you do so, my God, we bless you mightily in Jesus' name.